Okay. Um, all right. Okay, uh, welcome to E222. Um, just to make an announcement, um, we will have a quiz survey, and it's going to be a single question quiz. A single question quiz weighted at 0.5%. So the idea behind the quiz is the question will be very easy, right? But the idea is, I would like for students to attend lectures from now onwards. All right? Okay. Uh, so we will be generally having one quiz per week. Um, all right. So if you could pull a page from your exercise book, if you could pull a page from your exercise book. Um, yeah, just just a single page. Place your name and student number. All right. Okay, close your notebook. Close your notebook. All right, close your notebook, which means that you know you shouldn't be copying. And this quiz is only a friendly quiz. All right, uh, I only kill the students in the short test and final exam. In the quiz, I let the students have a free ride. Okay, all right, so it's a friendly quiz, it's not a competitive quiz. Okay. Okay, and the purpose of the quiz is not so much, as I said, to kill you, but to ensure that the guys who didn't attend the lecture, they get a zero. All right? That's the thing. So basically everybody who is attending, be assured that you will get your mark. All right, so the question. Can you guys uh, see the question clearly? Okay. SR Lech, draw the circuit of SR Lech, number two, flip flop. Okay, maybe I'll make it easy. All right, S on Lech. So this is question one. Draw and populate. Okay, book is not allowed to be open.
Okay, only two questions. The first question is with four marks. The second question is worth six bucks. Okay, guys, so only two questions. I'll give you guys about 10 minutes or so, maybe five minutes, it's very fast. And this is only a friendly quiz, okay? Like a friendly soccer match. Doesn't really matter. So long as you're here, you'll get the mark. Well, most of the marks, okay? And for the friends who, uh, for your friends who are not here, make sure you tell them that you did a quiz and don't tell them it was 0.5%. Tell them that it was 10%. <laughs> okay. Guys, in question two, you only have to fill out that case. I don't want to see all the other cases. Just that case. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten to put in. Okay, so you only fill in these six blocks, six empty blocks. First you've got to draw the circuit and then just fill up those six empty blocks. If you have finished, put your hand up, I'll come and collect. Okay, of course, put your name and student number. Okay, if you're finished, put your hand up, name and student number. Hand up if you have finished. Finished. Put your name and student number. Make sure you have your name and student number. Name and student number. I think uh, as you're finishing, just pass it to the side over here, pass it to the side, pass it to the side. So we'll begin our lecture shortly. So guys, if you're confused, what is the mode of operation? You've got to say one of the three following options, four following options, set, reset, hold, or sometimes instead of the word hold, they say memory or commit to memory. Uh, and then the last one is uh, invalid or not used. Make sure your name and student number show up.
Anybody else? Guys? How many of you guys still holding on? Okay, I'll just come to this side. It's just 10 marks. Okay, let's finish off now, let's finish off and we begin our lectures. Okay, anybody else? No? Okay. So, the good news in today's quiz is this, that um, we will use the result. Anybody still holding on to the question, to your answer script? Okay. So, uh, it's all in the lecture notes, all right? It's all in the lecture notes. I'll switch over to the lectures shortly. Um, the good news is we will use this as a bonus, as a bonus to, um, to your uh, short test number two, right? So, for example, if in short test number two you score three out of 7.5% and let us say you get full marks in this right so your mark becomes 3.5 out of 7.5 alright okay so this whatever score you have here it contributes it's like a bonus it will be add on except for if you score 7.5 out of 7.5 then I can't give you 8 out of 7.5 alright okay alright but from next week so Every week we'll have a quiz, we'll have a surprise quiz. Um, we'll have a surprise quiz every week. Um, but um, uh, every week will not be a bonus. In some seven weeks, like for example, maybe next week in week 10, now that the news will go out that there was a quiz, we will, um, we will do it in such a way whereby uh, it will cut out. So maybe your, let's say if next week's one is 1%, right? So that means your short test number two will be out of 6.5. So that one is part of your 6.5. So it's better that you attend. Because the questions in the quizzes will be dead simple. Right? Was that question simple? For those of you who attended the lectures, very easy. Right? But the question in the short test will be full on. It will not be uh, simple recall or memory recall question like this. It will be an application question. It might receive a traffic light or a calculator, some, some problem which is an application. Like for example, what you saw in the midterm exam. The questions were application in nature. All right, let's, uh, let's quickly flip over to the, uh, to the document camera. Okay. guys firstly we started off okay let's see the sequence and why am I forcing everybody to attend lectures well um, because if you miss one lecture the next lecture becomes more and more difficult we started off with the SR latch right? on Monday or was it Tuesday we started off with the SR latch the set reset latch then that was only two input system two input and only two NAND gates, right? We started off with the SR latch. For those of you who, uh, who missed Tuesday's lecture, this was the SR latch. Yeah, everyone, everyone got that answer? How many of you missed the lecture and had some trouble? But right? what was the SR latch? That's just the latch, only two NAND gates. And then I showed you twice, on Tuesday as well as Wednesday, how we follow the tooth table. And because there's two inputs, there's only four possible combinations. If there's two inputs into any system, there's only four possible combinations. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. When we went through the tooth table, we found that two of the combinations were good boys. They were 0, 1, 
That was a good combination. And what zero? Why are they good combinations? Because they are consistent. Zero, one, and one, zero, they give the same flat answers. So no matter how many times you apply zero, one, and one, zero, they will give the answer as per the output as per this truth table. Right. One, one is inconsistent on first observation. One, one for the match is inconsistent. In case one, one, one was giving one, zero. In case two, one, one was giving zero, one. On first observation, you say one, one has gone crazy. It's not giving the right consistent answer. Right? But on second observation, when you look at it closely, you realize, hey, 1-1 one, one is holding on. Right? So there's a the purpose of 1-1. One, one. So we say, okay, 1-1 one, one will allow it in. The problem arises when we did 0-0. Zero, zero. When we did 0-0, zero, zero, we then found that the output was 1-1, one, one, but then the follow-up with 1-1 one, one started racing. It started the machine started flipping back and forth. Zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one one. And that makes it unstable. That burns it up. If you make something even a human being work too hard, run back and forth. So if I ask even uh, one of the best athletes to run back and forth, touch this wall, touch that wall, to flip flop between zero and one, zero and one, green and uh, orange uh, walls, you will burn out eventually. Right? So the machine or those gates those transistors which are inside those gates, every gate is built using a transistor. It will burn out. It will overheat and it will burn out. Right? So we say this is a malfunction error state, so we don't use it. Because we now know that this machine only partially works. Partially works. That's not full, it's not a fully functional machine. Otherwise, if it was a fully functional machine, all four, all four combinations would have worked. Right? So, we then come up with this truth table. We summarize this information into this, right? Later, we go from our two input, two NAND gate, we introduce two more NAND gates. So now our system has four NAND gates. And we have something called a clock signal. We now have a circuit of a flip-flop. So if you look at a flip-flop closely, you find that inside the flip-flop, the latch is still the basic unit, right? The latch is the fundamental unit, right? So, uh, the fundamental block sitting inside something known as the SR flip-flop. Okay, then I went through, so I won't explain all of this, but we went through, you know, some scenarios that if clock is zero, what happens? If clock is one, what happens? And if you guys miss this out, please make sure that you uh, discuss with one of your friends, all right? Okay, then I went through uh, working of to find out what the truth table looks like. Uh, this is actually not a truth table, this is an extended truth table, or like truth table like you're working. You know, like when you were in primary school, you have to show you're working, right? So this is, I'm just showing you working of how I got this Q and Q bar, right? And hold, so we find that there's another new line, something called hold. So we now summarize this, we remove these two S and S star or R star because that was something which is intermediate in the middle. We remove those two lines and we find clock S and R. So in this case, if you look at the truth table, the truth table title has got Q n plus one. Q n plus one is the next state. So whenever we are talking about memory, you always have to talk about state. State is S-T-A-T-E, right? Okay? State. State of memory. State of memory basically means what is it currently holding? What is it going to hold? Right? Current and next. Right? So what is it currently holding? So memory is a container, right? A container, you fill it up with some number, right? To store a bit. And what is it going to hold in the next iteration? So that's why you have two lines now. If you look over here, that's Qn, you know, mathematically n is current, n plus 1 is next state. What if there was something called n minus 1? n minus 1 was, what would that have been indicating to? From your mathematical knowledge, if somebody said Qn minus 1, even though I'm not using it, what do you think mathematically is it referring to? Previous state, right? So sometimes in some textbooks, but not generally followed, they have Qn 
minus one and Q in, previous state and current state. Right? But the method which we follow is Q in and Q in plus one. So from so present state and next state, yes. So um, maybe that's a very good word you use over there. So we use say present present or current state. Okay, present or current state or next state. As you go through different books, we use different uh, different words, right? Some people use Q N. Some people, uh, some books they use. Uh, so some people for Q N plus one they use Q star or Q plus, or they put a Q with a bold or something like that, or, you know. But they don't do prime because Q prime would mean Q bar, yeah? Okay. All right now. So. Let me restart from this point. If clock is zero, so we look over here, if clock is zero, and your S and R are both X, your S and R are both X, because we are using hold, because it is hold, yeah, the, 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 the system is under, the mode of operation is hold, right? That means your QN plus one will equal to Q, right? So that's what it's saying. Your Q n plus one will equal to Q, right? So basically, what I want to say is, your your Q n plus one. Okay. So basically, what we are trying to say here is Q n plus one. Your next state will equal to your current state. So that is memory. That when you check it next time around, it will have the same value as what it is currently having because it is a whole. Now let's follow the next line. If clock is one, if clock is one, and S and R are both zero, we jump all the way here. You are in hold mode. Q is equal to Q, right? So Q n plus one is equal to Q again. All right. Now in this one, if clock is one, S is zero, R is one. Clock is one, S is zero, R is one. We go into reset mode, right? We go into reset mode. So that's zero, one. So what we have for Q, it's zero. Reset is zero. Q becomes zero. So what do we learn from this, guys? We learn that in this particular mode, where clock is one, S is zero, R is one, the system is forced to have Q equal zero. So that's fixing the output. Remember I said when it is zero, one, or one, zero, the system is fixed. There's no play in that. Right? So, you have zero. Right? Your Q equals zero. And Q n plus one is equal to zero. And over here, it's one. In one, one, it's invalid. We don't use invalid. Right, now, let's see how we, so all we are doing is, guys, we are going to go from one table to another. So did you just see, I went from our working table to our truth table. In our truth table, we have clock, we have S, we have R, but what do we have missing over here? As compared to the previous, the working table, what do we have missing? We have Q and Q bar which is missing. Yeah? But what do we have instead of Q and Q bar? We have Q and plus one. Now, from this truth table, from this truth table, we go to the next table, which is characteristic table. So you see how everything is linked. From the ledge, we developed our truth table for the ledge. Then we added some NAND gates, we made a flip-flop. From the flip-flop, we developed the working table for the flip-flop, right? Then from the working table, we got the truth table. From the truth table, we now get another table called the characteristic table. So it's all linked, it's all sequenced. If you miss one bit of the puzzle, you won't be able to know how we got from there to there. All right, now, let's have a look at this. We now have another table where the inputs are. We want to really look at something. So basically, remember how we always gave an example of we have a, um, a box or a shape, and then you draw it in, in isometric, or you draw it in orthographic, or you draw it in perspective. But they're all pictures of the same thing. They're all drawings of the same thing. So all we're doing over here, guys, is that by drawing different tables, we are looking at it from different points of view, right? If you look at it from, let's say, isometric point of view, 
we can only see one angle. We don't see what's happening at the back. Right? If you look at it from plan orthographic, you can see the plan better. Right? If you look at it from oblique, it's a slightly different view. So in this table here, we want to know you are given your current state. Your current state is known. Your two inputs are given. So you want to know what is the next state. Right? So for example, in a video game, right? let's say a PlayStation game, right? you've got a vehicle. Your current state is accelerate, right? You are inputting, your three inputs is accelerate, step gear, and you're steering slightly towards the right. So obviously, given these three inputs, you know what your next state is. Your vehicle will go in that direction, in you know, in a particular speed, right? Okay? So that's what we're doing. We know our current state, current state is given, your two modes of operation is given, so we should be able to predict what our next state is. Right? Because the mode tells us, the mode is like the gear and the steering. Okay? Right? And the current state is the current position. Okay? Alright, so let's have a look at how this was extracted. Now in this table, you've got QN and QN plus one. Right? Over here, you had clock. So when you look at these two tables, let me zoom out. When you look at these two tables, guys, what do you see is missing from the bottom table? Clock is missing. We don't deal with clock anymore. Right? We're only looking at QN and QN plus one, and of course SNR. So let's have a look at this. If S is zero, okay, Q, if S is zero, right, and R is zero, and let us, you know, we've got, we, we populate this table. Let's populate this table in uh, the normal fashion. If you have three inputs, so there will be eight possible inputs, right? If you have three inputs, so eight possible combinations, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, all the way to 1, 1, 1, right? Everyone knows how we got this part in depth, yeah? Right? Then let's look at just these two. 0, 0, okay? 0, 0. If QM, and what is QM plus 1? If you have 0, 0 here, QM plus 1 is equal to QM. So QM plus 1 is equal to QM. 0, 0. 0 equals 0. Now 0, 1. 0, 1. Right? QM plus 1 will equal to 0. QM plus 1 will equal to 0. That's fixed. We have no options about it. Right? Now, as I think I should put this in a bubble, otherwise people might think that I'm trying to put a note over there. All right, now, one zero, one zero, QN plus one equals one. No option about it. QN plus one equals one. One one, invalid. One one, QN plus one is invalid. So we put an X, right? Because we want to put it in proper binary, uh, binary sort of numbers. So remember in binary, you have either zero or one or an X. I don't care. Okay? Note that we don't use a one one. Now, zero, zero, 0, 0, 0, 0, QN plus 1 equals QN. So 0, 0, QN plus 1 will equal to QN. What was QN? It was 1, so we bring the 1 here. But same thing goes over here. 0, 0, QN plus 1 equals QN. So QN plus 1, we can write a QN. What was QN? QN was equal to 0, so we bring the 0 there. Everything else is fixed. 0, 1. 0, 1 will give a 0. 0, 1, QN plus 1 will give a 0. 1, 0, QN plus 1 equal to 1, 1. 1, 1 is invalid. Invalid is an X. Right? Now, let's take it to the next step. So I've done a review. I'm taking this really slow, and I'm trying to give you a re revision. Right? So that you become strong with this topic. So you, know, you may be thinking I'm doing something crazy. But pretty much everything is built using sequential logic. Right? When you talk about your calculator, when you talk about your MP3 player, uh, you know, your PS4, PS5, whatever you, any digital system requires memory, it's based on this. It's based on this, and I'm teaching you the basic foundations of it. All right, okay, let's go to the next level, guys. Let's take it to the next level. So till now it was just revision. Let's take it to the next level. Okay. We now, we now, I think I drew too many lines over there. Okay. We now look at the next table, guys. So we have something called the SR flip 
flip-flop. Okay, the SR flip-flop excitation table. All right. Okay. Uh, maybe I can do something before that. Okay, maybe I can do something before that. Um, so I want to put everything in one page so that you guys can see clearly. Okay, before that, let's just do one more thing, guys. I'm going to draw a Kano map. You see, you've got a QN plus one. I'm going to draw a Kano map here. Right? How many inputs are there, bro? This is, this is just a normal standard eight uh, combination Kano map. Three inputs. Eight possible outputs. Okay. So we have zero 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 one 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 zero zero one. Let's put S and R there and let's put QN. Those are our inputs from our truth table, from our characteristic table. Okay. Okay, apologies for being rough. Okay, so what are we plotting over here? We are trying to plot our QN plus one. So let's fill it up. Let's fill the kernel map up. So zero, zero, zero. Let's look at this. Zero, zero, zero was what, guys? Zero. Zero, zero, one. Zero, oh, look at it. Okay, be careful. Zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, one. Look at that, okay? It's not following sequence. Because over here, I've put it, I drew the color map in the wrong way. I should have gone Q, N, S, and then R. But it doesn't matter. Whichever sequence you put it in, you'll get the same answer. So, zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, one. Will you give us a one? Yeah? Everyone happy with that? Now, let's look at the next one. Zero, one, zero. Zero, one, zero. We'll give you a zero okay next one 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 zero one uh, one zero zero one zero zero will give you a one i'm following the binary sequence one one zero will give you x one one zero will give you an x okay next one Zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, one. Okay, that's already done. Zero, one, one gives you a zero. Zero, one, one gives you a zero. Right? One, zero, one. Is that correct? One, zero, one. One, zero, one. One, zero, one gives you a one. Right? One, one, one gives you an X. Okay? All right, so um, what do we have? Let's plot this out, guys. Let's plot this out. Can you see this block of uh, two x's and two ones? We can make that a big block. Okay, that's a big block over there. What about this little one over here who's alone? Well, he can link with. This one there, okay? All right. So you have S. What would you say, guys? What would this little block be? This block of four. S. Uh, what about this two? This block of two. This uh, group of two. The group of two would be um, QN, QN and QN and R bar, yeah? Is that correct? QN and R bar. Right. So basically, 
our qn plus 1, the equation we find from the characteristic table, so just note it down, from the characteristic table, we find that qn plus 1 is equals to s or qn and r bar. Set. Okay, that's all we did. We just took our characteristic table, we found what the equation was. So now we have a relationship to find in a formula way what this is. But, you know, you can always look at the truth table or you can always use the formula. Now, I was going to go to the next table, which is called the excitation table. Now, what does the excitation table do? Let me show you the heading, the, the, the title, the title block. Okay, you have QN. You have Qn plus 1, you have S, you have R. Okay, there we are. Okay, in this particular table, so the characteristic table and the excitation table, they are all linked. Right? In fact, all the tables so far are linked. Now, what can you tell me this time around? What can you tell me is the relationship between the excitation table and the characteristic table? What is the relationship between these two tables? We already found what the relationship between characteristic table and tooth table was. I want, to tell, I want you to tell me what is this time around. What, what about these two tables? They are now linked. It's like a train, right? The latch is in the front, then the tooth table for the latch, then we have the flip-flop, then the, the, the working table, the, tooth ta uh, the working table, then we have the tooth table, then the characteristic table, then the excitation table. This is the, lucky for us, this is the last table, right? For this flip-flop. There are many other flip-flops, by the way. Right? Okay, for this flip-flop, this is the last table. Right, so... What is, what is the relationship? All right, I should tell you this. Look at it over here. Let's talk about a video game. Right, so let's say it's a shooting game. Let's say it's a, what's a good shooting game? Um, Call of Duty, okay, Call of Duty. Right, um, it's very expensive to download all the extra add-ons. Okay, yeah, it's like $60 US, so times 2.2, .2, you know what it is, right? 2.2 .2 is the US to Fijian rate. Okay, so in your current state, you are holding an M16, right? Or uh, what's the Russian game's name? Russian gun's name? Okay, anyway, all right. You're holding an M16, right? Um, and you're, in your current state, you're holding it in this direction. This is for characteristic table, right? You're holding it in this direction. Then you, let's say one of the, let's say S is changed direction by 10 degrees or 15 degrees, right? And R is shoot, okay? So S is changing the direction, you know, up and down, and R is shoot. So our next state is, you know, the bullet going in, firing some target, right? Okay? That's what you are doing in the characteristic table. You are giving instruction. You know your current state. Your current state is known, right? Your current state is known, and you are feeding in some commands. So you're driving your machine, so you're saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the direction of the gun, and I'm going to pull the trigger, right? So, and then you know, then you got to know, then you know what will predict, you've got to be able to predict what's happening in the next state. The bullet will go and fire your enemy, right? Will hit your enemy. Okay, in the excitation table, it's this. You know your current state, you know your current state. You know what you where, what you want to do in your next state. Right? You know what you want to do in your next state. But you want to find what two combinations to get there. You want to know your combination to pull, right? What do you want to do to get there? So you know your enemy is in that direction, right? Standing at the door. Right? So, and you know your current state is pointing this way. So what are you going to do? Right? So let's say so your partner tells you, calls you in and says, 
the enemy is in this direction, as if they are the door. So you now have got to put in some commands. We do it, we do it subconsciously. Straight away we, we do it as a human being because we are intelligent beings. But for a machine, you've got to tell it, okay, move your gun in that direction and then shoot. Right? So you've got to change direction and shoot. So this is it. You know your current state. You also know, you also have knowledge what your next state should be. Your direction. You want to make, you've made a decision that your next direction should be this. So what are the commands you've got to feed in to achieve that? That's what your excitation table does. Your current state is known. You also are aware of where you want to drive it. What do you want to bring it to in the next state? So what are your commands? What entry should you do? What commands, what buttons should you press to take it to your next state? Right? So let's, let's do this. Let's now extract your excitation table. All right, so you've got two inputs. So let's now first put in two inputs, only four possible out outcomes. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. All right, now how are we going to do this? So let's look for zero, zero. Zero, zero. Where does QN and Q bar, uh, QN plus one have zero, zero? So let's go here. The first line, anywhere else, let's follow through. Second line, anywhere else, zero, 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 zero. No, only the first two lines, okay? So the first two lines, you have zero, zero, and QN plus one will also give zero, zero. In that particular situation, in these two scenarios, what is S equal to? It's always zero. So that's we're happy with. What about R? What can you say about R? It was zero and one. So therefore, it was inconsistent. So we give an X. It's a don't care. All right? OK, now let's look at the next one. Zero, one. Let's look for zero, one. Zero, one. Okay, sorry. Zero, one, zero, one. There's one over here. Anywhere else? There's no another. All right? So zero, one, we can do this. So maybe over here, if you want to put a note over here, if we, if we, if we say QN, QN plus one, this was zero, zero. In this case over here, that's for this guy, eh? Right? Um, in this case over here, Q, QN and QN plus 1, you have 0, 1. And that's for those guys. All right. What do we find? Were there any other cases of 0, 1? None other. Right? So what do we have? That's a simple answer. 1, 0. So we're just basically rewriting the table, but in, in, another, in another way. All right. Now let's look at some more. 1, 0. One zero, one zero, one zero. We don't need to cover these two because they're already taken, right? One zero, one zero, one zero. Oh, one over here. Any other? Only one. One zero, only one it seems. Yeah, only one? Okay, one zero. So QN, QN plus one, that's one zero. And what do we have? There'll be a zero. zero and one. Okay, let's look at the last one. One one. One one. We have a one one here and a one one there. Can you see there's two cases? One one over here in line address four and line address six. You've got one one. Right, so let's now put that together. So, okay, uh, I didn't know how else to draw that. So that's one one. Those two are grouped together. Right? Okay, what happens in this two one one situation, guys? What can you tell me about S? S change from zero to one? Inconsistent, yeah? So S was and x, and what can you tell me about r? It's consistent. It consistently use r. So that's our excitation table. 
Where is our excitation table? Okay. So this is our excitation table. So you must understand, and the good news 